right. Back to it. I think what we need to do is figure out this boxable expression. And answer the question, uh, which I, I think I posed before the break, which was, what if there's more than one table? Okay, so boxable expression takes QS, it takes DB, it takes whatever GB is. Ah. Um, so like that could be a table, and then there'll be like Postgres or PG or whatever. Um, but what if we need a boxable expression about multiple tables? More advanced query source. Use inner join query source and left join query source in the QS parameter. Okay. Okay. So, let's do it this way. Um, so, we're going to do uh, box sign uh, boxable expression but it's not episodes it is a left join query yeah like that except not quite like that uh, because I'm pretty sure what we need is like Yeah, this is not a filter, so this would be like not selectable. I don't know if this is the right type to be here. Um, let's try saving that. It's thinking. Let's import that. How about now? Still doesn't like it. Uh, why? And will, we be, will, will I be able to tell by reading this? Okay, the trait bound. Episode streams. Uh-huh. Grouped, operator, nullable, stream ID, all of this. Uh, oh, wait, 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 all of this. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe even more. How does this? There. Okay, hold on. Let's start here. One, two, three. I'm counting the, the open uh, angle brackets here, right? Three, two, three, four, five, four, five, four, three, two, one. zero so like that should pair with that the trait bound all of this colon detail appears on table query source joins join Oh, I see. So, like, this has left outer, and this has join, inner. Wait, oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, I did an inner join. Didn't I mean to do a left join? Uh, 
Okay. <laughs> uh, we don't have an order <laughs> error any longer. Uh, that's nice. Required for column stream date to implement thing. Table appears in from clause table count. Never. What does it mean? Expected once found never. Hmm. Two redundant requirements and required for stuff to implement. Okay, so we have select DSL and we have the different columns from the episode table. And then we have schema streams column stream date and then our raw SQL. Is this a thing where it just needs to say it's nullable? Like that? Well, that improved the situation. Now what's the problem? The trait appears on table. All of this is not implemented for schema episodes table. Okay, where is this coming from? This dine boxable expression episode table. Is this something that I I'm saying somewhere? Oh, create predicate does that. I see. I see. Um, okay. Se several things do that. <laughs> and now they're broken. Okay, we don't need that anymore. Um... Right, right, okay, so I, if I open this again, I, I will say the problem, right? Because boxable expression schema episodes table, um, the trait bound to this thing uh, doesn't match. It's not, th this appears on table is not satisfied because this has a, a join between these two tables. So this, this whole thing is what I was avoiding by having just some raw SQL here that was pulling the, the stream date. What was the... Um... What was the issue again with the way I had it before? <laughs> Like, let's just, um, yeah, let's save that. There we go. And let's unwind a bit. This is, this is where, where I was at before. So I had extracted out stream date. And... It was still the raw SQL. Oh, it was giving me uh, it was giving me an error uh, that as uh, so this compiled. Well, it doesn't anymore, but it did. Uh, hold on, let me get to the right place.
little confused. Oh, okay, so there's there's where the join was. We need to back up. I I I redid too far. Okay. Right, because there's there shouldn't be a join for the previous version of this that did compile. So looking for that line 89 change to go away. Okay. So at this point, does this get us back to a compiling version? Yes, with no warnings. It doesn't work. Oh, actually, hold on, Go one more. So this is this is the version that we had tested that said as stream day. If I, if I just remove this, I think this still doesn't work. Are there methods here? The issue was that um, this wasn't getting aliased into something called stream date that was selectable uh, here. Does that take an argument? Let's see if I just messed something up here. Let's let's go back here. So what what's saved right now? Oh snap. Okay, well that's fine. Because I made <laughs> I undid and then I made changes. Uh, that's fine. I don't mind. Uh, okay, good. Let's just try building this and see what happens. This, this might actually work, but what we're effectively doing, like if I go back to PG Admin here, I think what we're effectively doing, let me just make a copy of this. I don't know if we're gonna wanna look at the two versions of the Bra SQL. Go back to this and then undo. I'm going back to where we had a working thing without the, the left join. Right, so if you do this, yeah, that works. But I think what we're doing, uh, what the, the last, well, here here is what the version that I had built and tried uh, earlier on was doing, right? Uh, so now I think what I'm doing is this. Does this work? It does. Okay. Do I like it? No. I think I would much rather have the version have the joins. But that seems to um, have implications of like the shape of the type that we're passing through things um, that I don't really don't really um, care for. So at least this should work, uh, and we built it. So let's go back to the app, and it didn't crash. And we can sort, and it sorts. Hooray. Uh, and you can just see how far behind I am in producing episodes for YouTube, because it's July. And I, I'm not through March yet. Uh, I've been slacking. Well, anyway. 
so. Uh, so basically I went back to the the version of this where we're just doing the subquerying. Uh, you know, it's very uh, comparable to what, what's going on here. What I could do is I could have like as stream date. The, the alias doesn't really matter because of the way that we are pulling the data uh, and the result here. So we're getting this vector of this tuple, right? And it's just this the second element of the tuple that uh, has the stream date. The only... Um, like what I could do is I could, there's not really any point for the alias. Like we're not reading based on that. Oh, it's called, you know, playlist ID. Uh, it's literally, it's, it's all positional. So even having that alias there doesn't do anything for us. What we could do is use the alias here. And then I might rename this to be like stream date reference. And then this SQL literal would be just referring to stream date. And then I would use that in the, the order by, right? So then the order by would refer to the identifier stream date that would be created here. And so I would use this in the select. And then I would use the thing that would be renamed stream date reference in the order by here, uh, but this is fine. Yeah, so stream date reference and then stream date down here. And we wouldn't need a clone because we would just create two separate, um, two separate values from scratch. But uh, I don't know that I really care enough to bother doing any of that. This works. Uh, so we're just gonna push it up and move on, finally. All right, back to GitHub. Open a PR. <sighs> okay. Well, that was fun. That that was a, a bit more involved than I thought it was going to be when I was looking at this this morning uh, before the stream. I was like, hey, that's weird. Why aren't we sorting by that? Uh, but there you go. So, uh, next up, ooh, this should be in, in progress, uh, follow on tasks or chained tasks. Let's see, let's see how far we can get on that today. So, uh, the use cases are here. Uh, I talked about them at the beginning of the stream, but essentially when we do certain things in the UI, like if I were to go to a stream, and I were to go in here. Uh, I, I guess I need to scan for clips. This is not asynchronous. Well, it's it's asynchronous, but it's not a background task. It uh, it just sits here in the UI, and we wait for the request to go back because it, it's very fast, right? To so just scan a directory for files that have a certain prefix. Uh, things that are not fast. Include saving here for some reason. I still have not figured out why this is so slow to save. Um, yeah. I guess um, maybe this is one of the one of the things that's been discouraged me from uh, from from dealing with glowing telegram, like using it, is the slowness of this specifically. But uh, I guess I still have streams in between the end of March and 
the end of of May, so so maybe that's just an excuse. Uh, anyway, we are waiting. Can I open developer tools? No, it's also going to be frozen. What's wild is that if you if you have the dev tools open when this happens, uh, it do, it gives you both a stop and a debug option. If you click debug and then you just let it resume, then it immediately works and everything is fine. So there's something in here that if you just pause execution briefly and then resume, everything sorts out. It was very odd, uh, but otherwise it's just it's just broken. What if I stop? Well, yeah. So like if I refresh, we, we didn't save anything. Yeah. It's very odd. Anyway. Um, I think I don't even have... Hold on, let's, uh, let's go here. I'll, I'll show you what I mean though. So while that's thinking, oh, no, yes, yeah. So while that's thinking, I'm going to go over here and um, I think I'm just going to create a, um, hmm, yeah, go. create a new issue. Yeah. So we're going to, we're going to create a, um, perfect. Saving the list of video clips and stream record hangs. That there we go. Ooh, we can select labels too. I I don't think I've ever used this specific UI uh, in GitHub before. Like creating an issue, like a, a full issue um, inside of the project. Assign it to me, sure. Uh, I don't have milestones. I might create milestones at some point. All right. So I think we should fix that soon. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, okay, so let me pause. I'm surprised that, there we go, debug script. All right, and so we're just inside of like, um, is this like a polyfill? Yeah. In text fields? Why? If I resume. Then. Element updated, did it? Yeah, there it is. And it's not like the neck, you know, it's not a network issue because the UI wouldn't hang if it was. It's some interaction between all these fields that we have and the underlying form management library that uh, React Admin uses, but there we go, okay. So anyway, now we can move on to the thing I was gonna actually demo. <laughs> Which is, um, if you want to, uh, like, the, the whole point of this application is to, to be able to ingest the video files from these streams, all of my streams, uh, and do a bunch of kind of post uh, analysis, really. Processing is not really the right word. But, um, so like doing a speech to text uh, on the audio track that I'm talking to you through, uh, which I can do by clicking that button. And we should see a thing here in a second saying the thing kicked off. Unless it's been broken by the refactoring from last week, which is also possible. Uh, and then if we go to audio and we start silence detection. Uh, refresh.
Okay, that's... <laughs> something is broken. Maybe we're gonna figure that out first. Um, but anyway, the idea is we have, I have this task UI and I have a task worker and a task queue and all sorts of task things that are for these asynchronous jobs. And if it wasn't broken, those jobs would eventually complete. Um, but some things, um, I guess a more, let's see, what are these cases? Yeah, I guess both of the use cases that I have right now for this are from the episodes view. So, so like if I go to an episode and let's say I actually had the video for these to, to be uploaded and click this upload to YouTube, that's really poor contrast, but uh, upload to YouTube button right there. Uh, and what I would like it to do is grab the video file, upload it to YouTube. Um, and then there's a separate API call that needs to be made to actually add the video that was uploaded to a playlist. Um, actually saying this out loud now, there's, there is a wrinkle in, in that, but essentially the idea is that we need to have the video file uploaded to add it to the playlist that already exists. If there's something, if something goes wrong with a video upload, we don't want to try to add it to the playlist yet. But also, every API call to YouTube uses up uh, a quota, an API quota, and that replenishes daily for these APIs. So um, as an example, a thing that's happened is I've been using this feature to upload videos to YouTube, and then it gets to the last one, and they may not go in order either, but the it I put in an order that the, the video should be added to the playlist here so that it doesn't matter the videos are not uploaded in order as long as they are uploaded. Um, but then it goes to try to add it to the playlist and it has run out of quota. Um, a thing I don't want it to do is I don't want it to try to re-upload the video again because right now it's like one operation that is both. I also, um, I do want it to eventually retry adding it to the playlist though. So those need to be separate jobs, separate tasks to do. Um, and one needs to trigger the other. Another example is like once the video is finally uploaded and everything's done, I wanted to update the database record to say is published true. Uh, I've been manually setting these, but it'd be really nice to just get a check off uh, on, on this that says, oh, it's done, right? Um, but that needs to be a separate task because I don't want the task worker to talk to the database and I don't want the YouTube, the code responsible for talking to YouTube to have to know about how to talk to the database. I'm gonna keep those separate. Even now that we've like merged in a lot of the APIs into a single crate, I still don't want those individual API endpoints to have to like do too much. I want them to focus on one thing, uh, talking to Redis, talking to, to Postgres talking to YouTube, or maybe at most two, like in the, the context of the task worker has to like pull from the queue and then call an API. But um, keeping it simple in that way, so there needs to be a separate task to update the record, and that needs to be triggered once the other two things are done. So uh, I started work on the back end for doing that. That PR is probably uh, a little broken now. Allow for multiple chain tasks. So what did we change? So I added uh, some changes to the task worker uh, to add a next task to the task struct. And so it has an optional next task. So the idea being that when you start the task initially, so when I click the button in the UI, I already know in advance all the things that need to happen. Uh, so I can just send that to the backend. An alternative way of doing this would be to like take the definition of the chain of things to do and store that somewhere, like have a database table that has like here is the chain of things to do. Um, 
the first thing that, that comes to mind for me is like a state machine or uh, because outside of this project, uh, I do a lot of things in AWS. Uh, the thing that comes to mind is like uh, a step function in AWS, that sort of uh, being able to define that, but we're not doing that here. We'll have in code in the front end, um, like here are the things to do, and we'll send that um, kind of chain of tasks to the task API and the task API will, will dispatch that. And that's safe here because um, at least for now, this front end is something that, that, that just I'm using um, and the things that it can do are defined by what's available in our, uh, in the internal APIs that the task worker can call. Um, you can see there's some stuff we need to, to work on uh, here that Clippy is surfacing. I'm not too worried about that. Um, it looks like I had started to define a push task function. I think that's now, I've already created that elsewhere. Get next task ID. Maybe not. We'll, we'll have to revisit like how much of this was re-implemented um, in other work. So in then in the task worker, the big change is that it's saying if there's a next task, then go ahead and um, looks like we are trying to get all the task data that was produced from that of the previous task. And then we are building uh, the next task and queuing it up, right? So conceptually, yeah, that that's, that's what you need. There are some things that I think we're still needed to do. Task worker queues next task, I think. That, that is what this is. So that should probably be checked off. Yeah, push task, next task. Um, we are getting it. Did push task get implemented properly? Um, a lot of, yeah, no, <laughs> I see. Uh, so a lot of warnings in the way, but basically the only thing this function did was just return uh, an okay. Uh, is that true? I mean, we did, we did, I mean, this is now out of date because we don't use a list for the queue, uh, but it's, it's pushing the task key onto the queue. Is there anything else we need to do here? I think there is because this code was not actually saving the task, like all of this stuff needed to be saved um, to Redis first at next, next task ID, right? So this gets the ID, but we're not actually saving it. So that's missing from push task. What else are we supposed to be doing here? Uh, task API supports next task. So um, this is all changes to task worker. So we have a task API to queue up, like to initially create uh, the task record in Redis. And that also needs to be able to accept next task and do that work of uh, storing all that in Redis. And then update the task UI to show info about next task. So like when I'm in the UI and I look here, I can see the status of tasks. It would be good to say, there are five additional things um, to do. Maybe, maybe we don't need to do anything uh, because when we do the next task, um, it's going to create a separate task record, right? This is not something where we're like, okay, well we have this, this task and it has like uh, a list of things to do or a state machine or whatever and it's one record and we just process it over and over again until we work through everything, uh, everything in it. Instead, we're taking that record uh, and we are doing that first, the, if you think about a list, <laughs> if you think about a list, um, right? So you have a list, that, that's not typically how you, there we go. You have item one, item two, item three, uh, and generally, uh, or a way of thinking about this is like 
the uh, uh, maybe too too big. Uh, generally, you think about the first item in the list as being the head, and everything else being the tail, right? So what we're doing is is previously the task was just one, the th the thing to do, you know. So I'm I'm just giving numbers here, but these represent like the individual units of work that the task worker needs to call the other API endpoints to actually do. So before it was just the one thing. And so now I'm making it a list of things. And what I'm saying is, is that as we are um, processing, we, we address the head. And then once that's done, the task that's represented by the list is done. And what we do is we create a new task that takes the tail, right? And that becomes the new list. And then that task gets processed by processing the head. And then a new task gets created that takes the tail, uh, which is just the one item. So that task gets processed. And uh, at that point, there's the, the tail is empty, so we're done. So this is a, uh, a, a list uh, traversal recursion kind of scheme, but expressed as a, uh, a worker. Uh, you know, so uh, yeah, all, all of that. Anyway. But before we do any of that, I probably need to figure out why the task worker is not working. It's likely due to uh, our refactoring from last week. So what do we got going on? Hey, it's a panic. Failed to pop task from queue. Um, what time zone is this? Wait, no, that's from, that's from uh, the 7th. That's from the 13th. Uh, that's not recent. Today is the 14th. How about task worker two? Uh, okay. Cool. Okay. So maybe it's an issue in the API. We so I'm going to go back to the front end and I'm going to go and queue up a task. I'm gonna try <laughs> uh, transcript. There we go. Uh, let's clear all of this and then start transcribe. And then things happen. Okay, interesting, interesting. Uh, error, 500 internal server error. Hmm. So transcription detect failed. I mean, that that is interesting. That imp Oh, right, right, right. So the way this works is that the front end calls the individual services API to start the work because that service knows like it, it knows the details about how uh, what it needs, right? And it knows how to talk to the task API and to then um, do all of those things. All right, okay. So notice this, resolving host task API. So that's not a thing that exists anymore. We don't have a container called task API. It's all inside of API. So somewhere in the project, Uh, there's a reference to Control shift F. There's a reference to task API. Aha. That's why. Um, hey, look, we have our, our task that JSON. And we have uh, services to run. And this is, I think, unnecessary now. So where was I referring to service here? Uh, 
Um, huh. Okay, I guess for now I'm not gonna try to redo all of this. I'll just, the only service now is API. Cool. Um, let's do Holbird. None. Okay, so there aren't, aren't any more references to a task API, like hostname, uh, for things. If, if you're wondering, by the way, why I keep on getting an untitled one uh, popping up, I think this is something that happens if you're using Copilot uh, and you like open a buffer, if you open a new, like just a new file that you don't save, and you have Copilot active in it. And then even if you close it, sometimes it'll be like, oh, hey, let me uh, let me open the thing back up. <laughs> All right, anyway, let's do Docker, Docker Compose up. And um, yeah, so what's happening is that the front end is calling this the uh, transcription API. Transcription API then was configured because it was using that environment variable to try to talk to something called task API that doesn't exist anymore. So it couldn't queue up the task to uh, do the transcription work. So that's what's going on with that. Uh, hmm. So now we're down to uh, six containers, All right? We got uh, Redis, front end, Postgres, two task workers, an API, and a proxy. Oh, sorry, seven then. And that's much faster. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, all right. Uh, maybe someday I'll... Um, I do have a separate project to use, uh, boy, what is the name? Uh, Tailwind, Tailwind for, uh, with React Admin. Uh, just, it's kind of a side thing. Um, yeah, it's annoying to have it flash white <laughs> when it comes in, but I don't know if I'll bother. Uh, so do we, do we have a task? Let's get rid of that. Oh, that's broken too. Yay, so many broken things to fix. So what happened? Why is that not working? Uh, is it? Okay, so. Um, we. Still got a 500 error, but why? Okay, so inside of transcription to detect we trying to connect to localhost 3000 okay pooling task api response okay so we got a response uh it was 404 okay so something's wrong with our url api tasks Um, HTTP localhost 3000 API tasks. Uh, oh, right, 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 right. So this is me forgetting a decision that I made before. So um, if we look at the Nginx config, oops, control P, Nginx, there we go. Uh, what I ended up deciding to do for the API routes is that I decided I would have Nginx translate slash API and just strip that off. That's what's going on here, right? So we're saying rewrite URLs that look like slash API and then anything, and then take the anything and use that, right? So we're stripping off API from the, the path that's being passed then to API, um, which means that this 3000 should not have API here. 
should just be tasks, right? Because we're not we're not making a call through Nginx. Um, now the context here is that things that are using task API URL are all backend things that are actually in the API service. So they're just calling, it's just calling itself now. Um, we could, we could debate, you know, do we really need to have the, the services at this point make API requests? That, this could just be function calls maybe. But maybe not. And change it later. Uh, if we don't, if we leave it as is, that means that if I want to eventually take some of that code and have a different service for one of many reasons you might want to have separate services for, for things, uh, it just, you know, you can just bring that over um, and it works. Except you have to, you know, you, you wouldn't pass, pass in localhost. You would pass in API. I mean, for that matter, I could just say API 3000 here. That would work even internally in the API container. That would probably also be less confusing about what's going on there. Uh, these say localhost because these are actually in the context of the client. So like if this was deployed somewhere, let's say, let's say I had a glowingtelegram.com, which I, Glowing Telegram is just a, you know, a temporary made up name. Uh, <laughs> but if it did, that's, that's what would be here in these things, because this should be like the externally facing thing, because it's just me using this locally, local host is fine. Uh, so that should hopefully work now. So if I start transcribe, there we go. Task two is now processing. You see there behind my, my little chibi saving uh, and it says it's complete it's definitely not <laughs> check status test completed load results nothing okay that's what I thought all right so what happened probably want to look at task worker since something happened um, we Say that we finished the task. Starting task. Work request client. Um, resolving host API. Connecting, connecting. Um, I'm seeing a lack of details about what happens. Uh, so we could probably look at uh, uh, the task worker and figure out if we need to add some logging. Task worker SRC main.rs. Okay. It's interesting. Um, so we have, you know, we'll panic if there's any kind of error, but maybe we're not doing a lot of logging of things that worked. We did, we, we have a print L, uh, LN for if we get the response from the API. Um, so here's finished task. Where is that coming from? Right here finished task okay but we didn't get a um, got response so that's interesting
So we are supposed to, if the response is not 200, then update the status to failed and break. Right? So update task status and break. Um, this doesn't print out fail to, I mean, if, if the update fails, then we panic. But otherwise, we just report failure. But this says complete, not failed. Uh, which suggests maybe we... Just something. Uh, let's see. Okay, so loop let response. So I think that's what's going on here, right? Is the, you know this this code right here where we're building the request to the transcription API is happening. Um, can we see in the tracing? Okay, we're parsing the response. Trying to see if we can see the status. Client encode. So this is us making the request, I think, encoding headers. So it's, it's unclear. what happens here. Okay. So like we check if the response status is service and available so we can have our, our retry logic. Let's just hide this for the moment. Okay. If it's not successful, then we break. So we don't get here. We don't fail to parse the response. Let's take a look at the um, API. Maybe we can tell what happens here, right? So the task worker would have called this API to do the work. Theoretically, let's, uh, let's queue up one more task. So if I start transcribe and I come back here, it's now processing. It's now failed. That's interesting. And confusing. Task three is now complete. Why was it failed and then complete? What's going on here? Okay, cool. Let's just. Hide view, there we go. Uh, so if I clear this, I click start transcribe. Okay, a bunch of stuff happens. Um, we see things that are coming from the UI. I'm just trying to see if we can uh, find the call from the task worker. So I see there's a lot of activity because of course like the WebSocket inter interaction with the front end is also going through here. What I might do is just add some more logging to the task worker. Okay, I think this is all WebSocket related, WebSocket related stuff. Oh, received. Okay, so this is uh, new status failed, <laughs> new status complete. Uh, okay, so more WebSocket stuff. Um, handle socket, handle socket, handle socket. It's a lot of traffic, a lot of log. New status processing. That's interesting. Debug request URI slash slash detect segment. 
Okay, started processing request. Finished processing request 404. Okay, do we have an extra slash somewhere in the config? Uh, maybe. So we'll we'll look at that after the break. I'll be back in just a couple minutes. BRB.